So, how's the paleo thing going, man? I heard you actually been losing weight. Yeah, I lost five pounds and DJ lost. How much you lose, DJ? Seven and a half in like 10 days, two nice. weeks. Yeah. At what point do you get to hold up a pair of big pants and take a picture of yourself? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just posted a picture of me just wearing a tinfoil hat today, and people thought it looked ugly, so I took it down. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Be- if you I lose too much weight... I was prepared what? for the podcast. Uh-oh. What's that for you? Okay. I was going to say, be careful. If you lose too much weight, Subway might hire you for a commercial. Nah, because they're not no, really... They're not paleo. Yeah, they got too much bread. <laughs> we're, doing a modified, we're doing a modified paleo. I think I said it's like, you know, you're not supposed to have any any dairy. And, you know, I've gone from having a gallon of milk a day to having like a tablespoon in my coffee, which is not true paleo, but, uh, you know, it's, well, it's a big change. Well, true paleo is debatable. Almost- I've, I've heard Mark Sassone say that it's okay to eat, you know, raw milk or raw cheese every now and then. It's not I mean, didn't deal. they drink milk back then? Well, well, yeah. milk was really an agricultural invention. Yeah. I mean, if you had a bunch of cows, that's really where you get your milk. I mean, there wasn't hunters that like hunted down a cow or a buffalo <laughs> and, and like, roped it. him and forcibly <laughs> milked it and ran away. No. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I've I've yeah. always wanted to like go to Goodwill and buy like some size forty eight waist pants and just hold them up and have my <laughs> wife take a picture, <laughs> post it on my Facebook. Yeah, but for you, it'd be what you're going to grow into. Oh, that's cool. That's, I agree. I agree. What? <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm screw you. Yeah, that- okay, well, all right. Here, Frank. Frank is the co-host today on yes. Green Fiends Podcast. I almost said the Paleo Podcast. I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. So yeah. I've been I've been reading about things. Hey, I want to say um, the streaming. You told is- you told me you told me you were done reading. Like I tried no. to get you to read a book, and you're like, no, I just want to watch visual media now. <laughs> no, I read a book today. I read Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. The whole thing? Yeah. It's 50 pages, man. So they're oh. short pages. I read it in the backyard in like an hour and 10 minutes or something. Um, nice. Yeah, that's pretty chill. I want to recommend that for everybody because, see, I've never read any of those old dry or academic boat, what I call bow tie libertarianism, which is like Lee Rockwell, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, in, bow tie li- liber- libertarians aren't always dry. Jeff Tucker is hilarious and he wears a bow tie. I know, but they're all in that like scene that cuts us out you know like lou rockwell won't come on the anarchy gumbo and you know they're all great and i can't badmouth them at all except to say lou rockwell's like 108 but um you know they're all great <laughs> they're all great and really I, like i didn't really realize like everything that comes out of our mouths and everything that comes out of you know except the crocodile and tranny hooker stuff everything that comes out of our mouths is, is paraphrasing murray rothbard <clears throat> through like ben quaker through lrn through you know stefan molyneux whatever so if you want to go yeah. to the source I'm going to call today's episode Anatomy of the State. And on the Freedom Fiends, I'm going to link the PDF to Anatomy of the State. I think y'all, I think Fiends should go read it to like really understand where this stuff comes from. Cause that guy, you know, he took, he took von Mises and, and, uh, kind of stood on his shoulders and perfected it. And he invented anarcho capitalism and the phrase anarcho capitalism. So I think people should go read, uh, Anatomy of the State. You can read it, you know, in an hour, two hours tops. Yeah. Completely, yeah. and he's like the OG. He's like the Big Daddy Kane <laughs> yeah, of he, the libertarian world. He, hates, he hated. He'd hate hip hop though. He hated rock and roll. He was really uh, square in that way. But he liked jazz music. He didn't like modern jazz. You know, there's a, there's a statement I've made that I attributed. I, I read somewhere that Lou Rockwell said like the problem with modern libertarianism is its embrace of pornography and atonal music. And I don't I don't think he said that. I think Murray Rothbard may have said that. Sounds more like him. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I seem to remember hearing some quote about uh, what was bad and what was good, and there was bad music, and he, he seemed to uh, associate that with rock music. Not 100% on that, but, I well, mean, so what? If, if the guy if the guy was, you know, 80, year old, 80 years old and didn't like yeah. listening to, to modern rock radio, big big freaking deal. Yeah, uh, so, He invented anarcho-capitalism, so I think we can let him slide So we've that. stood yeah. on his shoulders, danced on his grave, and made it better by adding crocodile and tranny hookers <laughs> and hip-hop. <laughs> Which is what what you need. You know, we still got the, the principles. You know, the state is immoral. You have to hate it. It's all coercion. It's, he, he came up with all that, man. He said that. He was yeah. the one that said all that. Well, th- the thing about it is, it's supposed to be about the ideas, right? Not the man. I mean, we're not we're not espousing the great man theory and saying that Murray Rothbard should have ruled it, us all, and now we should all worship his. And his a lot dead of libertarians if do. Were a martyr. People people quote him like yeah. he's Jesus. Which is why I've avoided him, but I finally broke down and read him today, so I, I think everyone should do what okay. I do. Because, you know, eventually Neem and I are going to be the libertarian dictators of the world, and we're going to be sending people <laughs> off. To- <laughs> if you've read this book, you don't have to go to the libertarian reindoctrination camps. 
<laughs> y'all better get on that. Start reading. Yeah, yeah. You get on the golden floppy disc of redemption. Yeah. It's supposed to be about the idea. Yeah. Hey, have y'all been watching uh mainstream news at all lately? A little bit here. I yeah, a little bit. No, it's not like, really. What's been making you sick, Frank? Um, the Republican cool. Party's kind of co-opting Ayn Rand and well. Keep you know, ben, or... ben Quaker did say that they would come up with a false Ron Paul, and it's Paul Ryan. He's a he's an Ayn Rand yeah. fan. Although he mm-hmm. actually back- backpedaled on that and said, "Like, well, I was young and foolish," but you know, they're they're still quoting it. It's it's he's they're trying to get the Ron Paul fans, and really, Ayn Rand was not a libertarian. She was uh, she wanted the government out of business, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, she was pro IP, and she li- she liked some wars because you know you could sell them chip beef and and bombshells. If you're in yeah. business. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think any Ron Paul fan is going to be foolish enough to fall for Paul Ryan. I mean, maybe with 1% no, of them. Ron Paul but... fans are too smart. I, I would hope so. I mean, anybody who takes more than a cursory glance at Paul Ryan can realize that he's ridiculous. He's not trying to balance the budget. His, <laughs> his budget was supposed to be balanced in 30 years. <laughs> like, like, who thinks 30 years to a balanced budget is libertarian or, or drastic cuts? That's <laughs> no. not cuts. He's, he's cutting proposed increases, as Ron Paul says all the time. So I think anybody can see through that. I, I, I think it's a completely ridiculous idea. But we'll, we'll have more for you coming up after we pay some bills here. Fiends. Worms. Fiends. Worms. <laughs> the state Worms. are insignificant. Worms. <laughs> Yo. Fiends.com. Check in, Frank. Check, check. Check, check. What's up, Fiends? What's up, Fiends? Worms. And if you want to check in with the Fiends, you can call us, too. Uh, the call-in number is 307-215-5171. Give us a ring. Call um, us. I got to plug in the... Uh, yeah, you got talking. Michael's yeah. got to do stuff. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk while Michael does stuff, sets stuff up. Apparently, he's too busy eating steak. <sighs> He's slacking. With the fiends. That's slacking a quality the problem, compl- man. Quality complains problem. about my vacation time while he's stuffing his you're face You're on vacation meat. right now, man. I tried to get you to do he's, something this morning. You're like, I'm on vacation. See, see, see the difference between a vacation and a weekend trip, right? right. True. I like, the, way trip, I, I like the way your dad, your dad got you to come see him. He's like, yeah, I'm in town. I'm three hours away. And you're like, I don't know. And you're like, mm-hmm. he said, well, you went that far for a burger recently. So <laughs> how did he know that? Did uh, Frank tell him or does he listen to the fiends? No, he didn't say that. I just felt guilty about that internally. And I used uh, that with my wife. I was like, well, last weekend we did drive three and a half hours for In N Out Burger. So uh, I think we can I think we can swing driving for three and a half hours to, to go see, see your dad. dad. Yeah. So someone's been uh, so ever since we got the uh Fiends Radio streaming feed up on uh iTunes radio, we're getting a lot more listeners constantly. And uh, someone in San Francisco, someone in Pittsburgh has been listening for two days straight. Someone in San wow. Francisco area has been listening for three days straight. DJ nice. said they need it. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking yeah. it could be like <laughs> San Francisco. Maybe it's an ex stalker of mine, or maybe it's someone playing it on the radio, or bothering a neighbor with it, or using it to scare off burglars while they're out of town. Maybe they died in front of their <laughs> computer, they got tased with too much liberty, and it killed them. Maybe it's good music to, to detox the state as your body, too. True. <laughs> or they're really kicking dope. It's in a town called Novato. Or, or, or to shoot heroin, too. It's whatever. in Nov- Novato, California, which is, uh, I, I guess it's Spanish for Novatos. I don't know. It's in Marin. <laughs> it's in Marin. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> or as Frank says now, death statist. Death statist. Yeah. You know, whenever people say that like those old bull tide libertarians were racist because they like tried to attract the southern the Southern vote in the seventies, you know, try to not mm-hmm. vote, but you know, support, you know, like Lou Rockwell and M- Murray Rothbard, like tried to get the, the South will rise again types by pointing out to them that, you know, the South did have a right to secede. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, whoever thinks that, you know, that means they were racist. I mean, it was a Jew and a Catholic, you know, how many good, how many good old Southern boys really want to embrace what a Jew and a Catholic have to say? Yeah. Well, I feel like, we have an opportunity to do things with other groups. I mean, as libertarians, a lot of the things we, we, we disagree with pretty much everything or literally everything the government does. So if, if you know, your Christian rightists down south uh, hate the government controlling their kids and telling their kids that God doesn't exist. Well, we can we can agree with them on that. We can say, hey, well, maybe the government shouldn't be in the business of or if anti-war liberals think that it's ridiculous that the government, you know, uh, goes on war adventures all the time, we can agree with that and we can tell them. So I, I don't yeah. think it was racist of 
Rockwell or Rothbard no. to try to reach out and do that. I think we should be doing that all the time, but and then know. use that as a foot in the door to explain. Yeah, but them, I, don't, hey. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be played in Southern Baptist homeschooling sessions because as soon as we start <laughs> talking about the trannies and crocodile man, it's over. Oh yeah, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. Well, whatever. Trannies exist, and so does crocodile. So get over it. Yeah, and it's an important part of your recovery from the state if if you're in yeah. those things. I guess I never understood that idea of of protecting yourself from certain knowledge and protecting your kids or younger children from certain knowledge. Um, I mean, I guess people say, "Oh, well, kids have a right to be innocent." I don't think they have that right, well, and I actually, don't think that knowledge can hurt anybody. Murray Rothbard no. goes into that in Anatomy of the State. He talks about how in a free market, intelligent people would be employed, but intellectuals, pure intellectuals, would probably not. And pure intellectuals probably only exist with jobs because of the state, because the state needs the state, them right. to codify and put into words their codify their, uh, you know, to to like convince the teachers who teach the public schools and colleges. Well, I think it depends on what the work is. Because yeah. I think I think if you write something that people are willing to pay to read, then you're going to have a job. Uh, or if you do research and development for a company, like in the sciences, you know, if, if a company's trying to invent new drugs or new types of technology, like uh, brain implants to m let you communicate cellularly through your your frontal lobe or something, yeah. those people will get paid bank still. I think, but you well, wouldn't people, have people. People buy uh, Murray Rothbard's books on YouTube on Amazon. They do pretty well, but they're also put out Creative Commons by the von Mises Institute, so they're free mm -hmm. to download. Right, right. To where it's almost like uh, like a donation thing because you can get it for free, and pretty much everyone knows yeah. that. So, well, today, if you buy the actual book, it's because you well, want to support. Put it the this Mises way: if I had if I had a uh, if I had a three D printer that could print books that looked better than printing out the PDF today, I would have paid. Or, you know, if I lived next door to a bookstore, I would have gone and bought this book because I really wanted to sit in the backyard and read it. And I don't have a tablet reader and uh, I don't really want one. And they don't work that well in the sun anyway. So I ended up printing this thing out and taking the pages in the backyard. So, you know, mm -hmm. you, the, the word, the, the thoughts, are, we don't believe in IP. IP, you know, ideas can't be sold or, or owned. They can be sold, but they can't be owned. But really, when you're paying for a book, I would have paid for the privilege of a nicely printed book of this today if I could have had it in my hand when I wanted it. Right, right. Yeah. But again, you're not paying for the ideas there. You're paying for the fact that somebody took the time to print it neatly on yeah. pages and put a binding in and put a colorful cover on and ship it to the local Barnes & Noble or whatever. Speaking of uh, physical media, of things that are uh, free because they're you know, IP free media. Um, the new DVD is out. I'm holding a copy in my hand of Gun Training and the non with the non aggression principle, volume one, and uh, it's for sale. It's gonna be shipping on Amazon in about two weeks. You can pre order it there, but it's really cool. I got this the same day that I got the Fiends buttons, and people should buy Fiends buttons. You know, and I'm thinking like. I'm glad the Von Mises Institute exists. It's a great thing. I mean, I really think that part of the path to liberty is, you know, having a place where people can go to be lectured on the thoughts of the masters by other masters. But I really think that the most important part of spreading liberty right now is uh, buttons. So go on freedomfeeds.com <laughs> and click on the link that says buttons and buy the buttons. They're inexpensive and they're wonderful and people should buy them. I really yeah, think yeah. they're going to become a new alternative currency like Bitcoin. So if you get in at the ground floor, you might be better could. off, you know, if you buy a bunch of them. So, yeah. Well, I, I think in, in today's world where pop culture drives everything, I think it's more than convincing uh, scholars that the ideas of liberty are right. I think it's about making the ideas of liberty cool. It's yeah. more about convincing yeah. kids and young people that Obama's stupid and which is probably and why, and which is prob why, probably why Lou Rockwell blogged your hip hop song. He did, right? It yeah. was him. Yeah, and like, yeah. I really doubt Lou Rockwell listens to much hip hop, but uh, mm -hmm. he sees that. You know, uh, where Murray Rothbard probably would have thought it was the devil's music. Uh, you know, <laughs> Lou Rockwell, even though he's kind of a square, you know, religious dude, he's hip and he's right on, and he sees where the kids are at today. And he yeah. knew that that was a toe tapping hot dance number and blogged it. Yeah, yeah. I have a, a Facebook friend that's a, a fan of the Ion Me video, and um, he was telling me the other day, yeah, I, 
I mean, as much as the Keens versus Hayek rap video is cool, um, <laughs> it's not really the kind of thing that that'll get you moving. It's you know, schoolhouse kind of rock, man. It's very schoolhouse rock. You know, right? Like I mean, you couldn't hear somebody playing Keens versus Hayek bumping in their system as they yeah. drive down the block. You know, <laughs> yeah. When you, I own me, I've maybe. With, I, I think I've that done that with my. Dance. You can definitely. And then you, and then you accidentally <laughs> yeah. turn on your iPod and you think that people are coming to kill you because you hear hip hop out of the gun range. <laughs> Because <laughs> whenever you listen to hip hop, you get scared, Michael. Ah, oh, Randy England's calling. <laughs> no, I'm Randy England. Randy England right. are you on here? Hello, this is Randy England. Hang on, we're going into a uh, sales pitch here. Uh, just hold on the line, and we'll have you on in a moment. Thank you. Cool. Want to search porn in private, or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as seven fifty a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Jane-Ohm on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E-O-M-E. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons warrant uh for for getting blood in a dwi i don't have a dwi are you in well my, i know but you're talking about that are, are you are you are you picking up a conversation you and i had like four months ago as if we just like went uh, went in the other room for a sec no no i'm not i i i thought that you were talking about uh pe- taking people's blood in the state of wyoming Oh yeah, yeah. The when, fact that the cops can now do a blood test. Were you on talking the road about that, Nima, before I got on here? Not today, but we've talked about it a we've lot. We've talked about it, it, it before. Might be playing you, on the streaming server oh, right now. Oh, are you now. listening? Yeah, you probably listen to our streaming server of archives. That's probably right. Okay, well, you're. If you want to listen to the show, you got to go to the LRN link. Let me uh, send it to you here. Although you, you should only listen after, because otherwise it'll feed back. But let me send it to you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, no, nah, we weren't talking about that. We are talking about uh, Freedom Fiends merchandise. We can talk about it. If Randy yeah, wants we can. to talk about it, though. Yeah. That's a good topic. Well, Randy's an attorney, so I want to hear anything he has to say about the law, because uh, most people pretending to practice law, most people practicing law mm-hmm. as libertarians are not really lawyers. So, Well, one thing that I was going to say was that uh, here in Missouri, we've... Uh, We've had this, you get a search warrant for blood. We've had it for a real long time, even back when I was a prosecutor, which has been like six years ago now. And the thing that I always, I guess, wish somebody would do, uh, you know, a defendant, is that when uh, you refuse to, say, blow in the breathalyzer, then they take you over to the hospital, they get the warrant, and then they're going to take your blood. I wish somebody who is in there as a defendant would just look at the 
at the uh, this is somebody who doesn't want to give the blood because there can be some penalties for not giving the blood at least in Missouri there are but if you don't want your blood to be taken and you've already refused it and now they've gotten a warrant they have to bring a medical professional in I would just I'd want to look at that nurse in the eye and say nurse you do not have my consent don't take my blood I'm gonna sue you and <laughs> I wonder what would happen <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, if I was the nurse, I'd say I'm not touching this one, you know, well, because normally when you go there, you have to fill out all these forms and take, you know, permission slips and everything. Boy, when the police take you in there with a search warrant, you're not signing anything. Yeah, you know what I'd be afraid would happen is that right. then the cop and would take your, and all the that. cop would take your blood. Yeah, well, you know that's something that they have they've talked about doing, and actually it has happened. But well, not a cop. It has to be somebody that's trained. Um, now you EMT, could train a cop EMT, to do it. An EMT would probably do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and what they've done in some places, it had cops that are trained as EMTs. But um, and the other th issue is, you know, well, what if you say, "Hey, I'm not going to hold still for this." I mean, they literally need to. There's some places they they actually have to have to have a. Uh, a chair that could strap you down into kind of like did that a, in know, wyoming and uh five cops held a guy down uh in the hospital while he got his blood taken yeah and i'm not sure if uh you know i don't even know if the supreme court would go along with something like that if you had to if there was a real potential of harming someone you know uh when you were trying to get the blood out of them they might not consider that to be a a reasonable search and seizure so i just i'm kind of curious about what would happen if somebody really wanted to push this thing and then somebody we're coming back to... in here here we're coming back in live we uh we did the the fiends we are, we on are the, live now uh, the fiends on the, on the tightrope here doing doing tricks <laughs> recording talking during uh we're talking to randy england there's an interview with him on the anarchy gumbo if you want to check it out it's great he's an attorney in missouri and, and, and uh, we're talking about we were talking draws. to Randy about um, right cop, cops trying to draw your blood here in Wyoming and what I wonder too um, you know if you want to listen to what Randy was saying before you can go look it up on the archives but Randy do you feel like this this is kind of um, a Fifth Amendment thing as well I mean could there could that be a way to attack this case I mean if you're not supposed to self incriminate yourself I mean doesn't that include any of your bodily fluids which are part of your body part of your property well. No, the the courts don't consider it that way. They look at um, they look at uh, incriminating yourself is something that they call testimonial, and so if they take uh, you know, your blood or your DNA or your fingerprints or a, you know any of those things, they don't consider them testimonial. Well, I've actually um, heard of Christian but, sovereign citizens refusing to give DNA or be fingerprinted and said that that belongs to God, not to the state. I'm sure well, that's not legal. I, bearing, I think that's but, true. I think it's true <laughs> I'm too. just talking about what they think, not what I know. Not I, what I think I've been reading Murray Rothbard all day, and I'm kind of like the state. We want to talk about the Supreme Court. What are you talking about, man? Let's talk about freedom. Although you're an expert more than most people we talk to about the law, so I, I'll love to talk to you about the law. But um, you ever read Murray Rothbard? Oh, of course. Yeah, I just I I, I, I I agree with almost everything he says. I got I, I got a a couple problems. The, the only thing that Murray Rothbard has that I just I, I, what a main thing I can't wrap my head around is the idea that say mom can go to the hospital, give birth to a baby, and bring it home, bring it in the house, take it into the back bedroom, put it in the nursery, you know, in the bed close the door and never go back in and let the kid die and rot back there and i i always thought that i haven't read that particularly bit of rothbard what book is could, that in? it's the well this would be in um what's a for a new liberty i think it's in there the libertarian manifesto i mean i mean the guy is just absolutely brilliant you know 99 percent of the time but part of the non-aggression principle the way that that he applies it is that uh you can abandon a child uh, and abandon a child in a in a place where they could not get any kind of help or anything, literally to starve them in you know in in the back room of your house. And the idea there is that look, you're not stopping the kid from getting up and walking out and getting a job. You know, I mean, they don't have to starve, but you don't have a duty to do it. And I think there are legal theories that that answer that question without violating the non-aggression principle, mainly by the idea that you cannot put a person 
in danger in a dangerous situation and then walk away and go it's not my fault they died you know it I mean, if you push somebody across, off a building and they hit the ground and they're dying, um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be guilty of murder unless you go in and help them. I mean, you cannot put someone in a dangerous situation and then not stand for the harm that comes from it. And I think that's the same thing you'd have with a, a child abandoned. I think situation. that might be what's the word for that, uh, Nima? Libertarian macho flash. Uh, you know, we're trying to like extrapolate anarchism to its extremes of giving a, uh, an example that would shock people and saying it's within someone's realm. Uh, for instance, you know, saying something like, well, of course I think five year olds should be allowed to have crack cocaine and submachine guns. Why not? <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I, when I'm trying to, th- think of a theory of why libertarianism is right i'm trying to get around those yeah. shocking situations not not step into them and and i don't th- and i don't think it's necessary to uh to allow another person to abandon a child i think i think a person who would put a child in a dangerous situation and harm comes from it could be punished for that in a libertarian society and i do, I, do, I don't get the necessity of just allowing that to happen uh, when the person who does it is the person who created the dangerous situation. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I think they would be punished inevitably by social ostracism. I mean, if you'd found out that your neighbor had did that, done that to her child, I mean, would you talk well, to them anymore? I mean, wouldn't yeah, you tell people see, about that? A, I think see, it'd get around town. Yeah, and, yeah, but see, that's now. Now you're talking about you know, there's a couple of school of thought, schools of thought, you know, on anarchism, where in in the the people who believe that hey, we can solve everything by ostracism. I, I, maybe it's my 14 years as a prosecutor coming out, but I just don't believe that. I think there's going to have to be some people that are going to have to be removed from society. And and if you don't remove them, uh, I, I imagine there'll be, well, if anybody's scared enough, they're just going to, they're just going to kill them. Uh, I mean, maybe you would have to, you'd have to murder everybody that you couldn't ostracize but there could be a middle ground in there with a with a um an incarceration system paid for of course by the labor of the people that had to be incarcerated which would also double as a um a system for repaying you know paying restitution for crimes but uh yeah i'm not I, i'm not one that buys the right. ostracism would solve everything but i know that there's some people that are as for my neighbor uh, you know, my neighbor, you know, take letting their their infant die in a back bedroom. Uh, my position is that uh, I would have the right, if I knew about it, I as having the right to defend a third person. I have a right to go in there and ha- save that child if I wanted, and not be guilty of a trespass. And I would say yeah. that you could, somebody could come okay. in and vindicate that child's death, and that person could be punished for for what they'd done. Uh, and still be totally within the non-aggression principle. I don't know. My thought. Nima? Frank? Okay. No, I, I could see that. Um, what do you think, Frank? I mean, are you are you worried about as far as if we were living in a libertarian paradise, what the punishment would be, right? Because, I mean, that stuff happens anyway, whether you have a government or not. Yeah, that's a good question. What, what kind of punishment would be appropriate to come to bear on that and who would decide such a thing and how to be decided usually you find those things after it's too late after the baby's dead i also think that if you want to look at the baby as a property rights issue the father and possibly other people in the immediate family would have a property right claim to go save the baby yeah you know claim on it those are no different than are those are no different than the problems we have today in society for every real crime i'm you know we're going to have you're going to have murders whether it's a libertarian society or a totalitarian society you just do the best you can to yeah. discourage those things yeah. and individual societies should probably be the ones to decide what the punishments for these things should be obviously you know at the lower down level whatever sort of judicial dispute system that you come up with is going to make those those decisions and and there's going to have to be a consensus in the community if you wanted it to happen yeah you know Rob, we, we've joked on here a lot about like you, Do you know, think it should be more on a case-by-case basis or 
Probably. I'm, ahead, I'm, I'm a big fan of jury nullification. <laughs> That's kind of a case-by-case case, uh, concept. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know that yeah. you have it. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like each each act is, is completely unique. Well, yeah, but but I, I mean, any situation like this is going to be completely unique, and so I, I feel like, and I don't know if people should be standing in judgment, but I, I guess I guess that's why juries were thought of, you know, as far as I'm I, I know before American society. Um, so I kind of think that that's the idea of the society would decide uh, what the appropriate punishment was for each specific crime. I, I think that's probably true, although there's no way <laughs> yeah, that, that, that you're not going to have certain certain agreeable standards that come about. Like, like well, murder is one thing. I mean, that's, that's the most horrible thing that you're going to have. But like for damage for for theft somebody burglarizes your house and steals your tv set and then you come out and you find and you find out that hey it cost uh, uh five hundred dollars to fix the damage to your door a thousand dollars for the tv they stole and it also cost two thousand dollars to catch the sob and uh and to get them uh you know into into a court somewhere to uh to convict them so add up all that money and they owe, they at least Want owe to that right to liberty but short on cash you're listening to the freedom fiends podcast freedom fiends is now available for 24 7 streaming to your iphone android phone or other chromed robot turd click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com that's f-r-e-e-d-o-m-f-e-e-n-s.com we're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard. So send us some money. Let's uh, talk through this break and then have you... want to keep rolling during the yeah, break? Yeah, let's or? keep rolling and then have him go off the phone before the end of the break. And then we'll sure. come in and take another caller. No, I, yeah, I was just going to say <clears> that uh, I think that even though I, I, I agree with Nima that the case-by-case case thing is appropriate. I mean, that's why jury nullification is a good idea even now. But um, still, when you have people in a community that see things you know once you start settling on this is the appropriate result if you come up and you know kick somebody in the behind and hurt them that should be this and I mean you're gonna have standards that kinda become the consensus and everybody's just gonna know that if you do this thing to harm somebody else here's gonna be the crime <laughs> I mean there's no way to avoid that even if you you yeah. consider each one carefully you know i mean this is what we you know I, we always had when i was a prosecutor when when you had cases that where every case was exactly like the other like they have a dwi case or somebody got caught driving with a revoked license and it was a first offense and there was nothing particularly egregious about it and of course those cases don't even have a victim um you the judge would always say okay and he would just yeah. name what the standard punishment was and the prosecutor couldn't get him to give any more if he wanted and the defendant couldn't get him to give him less. I mean it was so standardized because it happened so often that everybody right. knew exactly what was going to happen and nobody could change it and, and yeah. that's going to happen in a libertarian society right, right. too so hopefully not for driving while revoked <laughs> certainly not for that yeah. Well, hey guys, thanks for uh, letting me come on. Well, hey, tonight. since we got you here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if I was on the wrong topic, you know, it's all right. There's no wrong topic here at all. Oh, but I did. I did send no you problem, the man. Link. That was I perfect. Did, I did yeah, send there you. There is the no link. wrong topic. That's mm -hmm. what yeah. so far. Okay. Well, thanks. And I think I hear my wife calling me for supper. So perfect. Yep. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks, guys. All right, all right. Thanks We're for right. calling us. You bet. Bye. Yep. Thanks. Peace. Adios. Nice. Yeah, I'm stealing time from the fiends here. 
I'm working That's on fine. My, I'm working on my business Frank, plan. At the top of the next segment, uh, give out the Fiends. 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 What's up, fiends? <clears throat> if you want to call all us, you can reach us at 307 5171 One more time, Frank. All right. If you want to reach the fiends, you can call us at 307 215 5171. That's it. That's my little brother. What's up? Yeah. That's Mini Fiend, Frank Min- Vidotti. Mini Fiend, <laughs> Frank Fiend. <laughs> Although yeah. he's taller than both of the actual fiends. True. <laughs> I was uh during the, the interview with Randy. So, what's I up, was, Michael? During that mini interview with Randy, I was stealing time from the fiends. I'm like, I have this little private chat window open, and I'm uh, and I'm I'm building a business plan with somebody here. So you guys talk for a little while. Hello. Well, I need another dead beer. air, man. Dead air. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, we got a long we got a long break coming up after this. You can grab yourself some beer. What's up? You need a beer. You said dead air. Is that what you said? Oh, I said dead you gotta, air. You got to no. pick up the convo. Um, Frank. Yeah, I was saying I need another beer. Okay. Okay. Back on topic, Frank. You were telling us. Um, I don't know if you want to go into this, but do you want to tell us about your little plan, your little good anarchist plan coming up with the? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? FTG. Well, what's going? What's going on? You said you were worried about doing this thing, and I told you to just go ahead and do it anyway. Remember? remember? Oh, as far as the signs. There you go. Okay. Okay. I w- wanted you to say it. Oh yeah. Well, no. My friend Sebastian, he's a good airbrush artist. Uh, shout out to him. And uh, I had an idea to get some signs. Um, uh, have him airbrush a few things. Uh, anarchist minded and libertarian minded. Cause uh, I had him during voting season. I had him airbrush me a sign that said um, why partake in a system that takes away your freedoms and I posted in front of the signs that say you know vote so and so for sheriff or vote so and so for constable so I had an idea for a few more signs and first one is you know it's it's not edgy I mean it won't get me any attention as far as uh, you know police go but I wanted it to say uh, you know vote for nobody will it get you any any tail will it get you any tail I don't know do women like activists uh, New I have a girl. I have a girlfriend already, so <laughs> yeah, she's here. So don't get him in trouble. Yeah, my don't get him in I, trouble. She listens I, to the podcast. My I, wife I and I don't it. don't like uh, doing activism, and if I started doing it, she'd support me in it. But I think it would. Uh, she likes that we're like locally low profile. You know, yeah. uh, I'm not an out in the streets kind of guy anyway. That's just how I am. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Frank's idea of putting up signs like in the middle of all the other political signs yeah. where they all are to just show people that hey something out of the blue you don't have to vote for one of these bags I mean you don't even have to vote yeah because you, you see those and, and you just think uh, tacitly I think the average person just says oh well that's the democratic process and that's how decisions well, are made as people put up these signs and then we decide who to vote for another thing is you know nothing of these people and then they get elected to represent you but how can you represent me if I don't even know you like, yeah that doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. So I, I like the vote for nobody idea. Yeah. There was a, a meme floating around on Facebook the other day I thought was hilarious. It, on a trash can, somebody in just like sidewalk chalk wrote, put your vote here and had like an arrow going down towards the trash can. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Put your vote there in the trash that's can. That's what you're that's doing. That's about as good as it's going to do. Yeah. That's what you're doing already. <laughs> yeah. Your vote does nothing. Yeah. It might also be fun, Frank, to um, maybe get to know these you know, so-and-so's for constables and sheriff and like write signs like, um, mm. kill the little kid and, and have an arrow pointing to the constable. I don't or know. Some, some, I don't want to get to that know them. Effect. You don't want to make it personal. No, I don't want to get to know them. No. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I just mean to dig up dirt on them, you know? Yeah, I understand that. But I mean, yeah. aren't they, aren't they hard to talk to in the first place? Usually when, when you are trying to interview somebody like that, they're all, they don't want to be transparent well, or talk I about mean, anything. Nobody's going to say their own dirt. You'd have, well, yeah. you'd have to find it through other means. One, one of the best ways... Um, we live in Texas, though, so... We do. <laughs> we do. Um, but you can look up... Uh, you can find if people are involved in court cases, civil cases. Yeah. I remember in journalism school, our professor told us, if you're trying to dig dirt some, on somebody, you know, plug their name into some kind of um, a court database. Mm-hmm. See if they've had any civil cases, especially things like a divorce. Yeah. Um, because the evidence can be public when it's discovery. Uh, in some cases, and you can find out things about people that they wouldn't want you to know that way by just looking up their past court records. Yeah. Although I feel like for my generation, talking about, you know, ideas of anarchy and being free, it's like talking to a brick wall. For your generation? I kinda, well, I mean, I kind of thought younger kids would be better at that kind of thing. No, they're, they're obsessed with, you know, I mean, football's cool. I love football, but I mean... They don't care about anything but, you know, pop culture, 
watching football game this Sunday, going to Hooters, but Hooters is cool. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> they they want they want to have fun and not watch yeah. Republican national conventions. Well, nobody likes to watch Republican national conventions <laughs> except Republicans. But no, I mean, like these are things they should should want to learn about and know about is you know wanting to be free but they're kind of brainwashed already no you're right and that's why we talked about that earlier i think the where you can really win is making anarchy cool you know making liberty cool making cops square making the state square there, there needs to be an anarchy tv show like on actual cable yeah maybe but do kids in your generation even watch cable anymore I mean, don't they mm. just watch hulu and netflix i know a lot of my friends love Parks and Recreation, and they <laughs> love Breaking Bad, so... Well, if they, well they're, hey, they're halfway there, right? Yeah. Ron Swanson's the coolest guy Ron I know. Swanson is so awesome. <laughs> and he's yeah. completely anarchist. You know, he did a... He I, did I haven't a, watched much Parks and Recreation, but... Uh, he, did a, he did a chat on uh, Reddit. You know, uh, I am so-and-so, ask me anything, where it's verified by the moderators oh, really? that they are. Yeah. He's not libertarian, but he's still funny as hell. Um, that nice. he is, Ron Swanson. I loved one of his answers. So someone said, what is your favorite firearm? <laughs> that and sucks. He, they asked, what is your favorite firearm? And he said, the trebuchet. Do you know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> are you guys a delay? You get a delay. Which is a, you, a catapult, are, for those who don't know. Are you getting a delay? Because you're laughing like 10 seconds after I tell a joke. You are getting a delay, aren't you? Um, oh. I don't think we're getting a delay. Okay. We right. must be. I mean, there's a, there's a delay are. inherent to right. the way well, it wor- the way Mumble um, works. Yeah, I'm gonna go off for a minute and come back on, and you guys can do the same. Except me, gives me a thumbs up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, all right, all right. Dad well, see, that's Frank. Are you that's, saying, that's stated. Are you which saying is, soccer which moms is, are more status than well, Mexicans? Well, it's interesting because people always complain <laughs> about you know Mexicans <laughs> steal all our stuff, but it's like apparently this Mexican feels like the state is that. taking more than he's give than he's being given, and the soccer mom feels she's being given more stolen stuff than is being taken. Yeah. Well, think about this. This Mexican guy in Texas has to face harassment from these these freaking uh, people who call them illegal aliens just because he wants to cross a uh, imaginary line. And well, you, you don't know, even know if he was illegal. Yeah, he might. Well, he might I mean, yeah, here, I guess too. that's racist. But well, that true. That <laughs> too. I'm sorry. It. You did it. <laughs> but no, I, I get I get what you're saying, Frank. Um, but I I think soccer moms can be more status than than anybody else well, often what do they uh, watch what do soccer moms watch they watch the view they watch oprah they watch well, they watch the local it's, the local news they it's watch less about, Dr. Phil. it's less about what they watch and more about what they do they run the pta soccer moms you know in their own incarnation yeah. were who forced prohibition you know think about it yeah yeah. It Plus was the gold was, diggers, so it was they're used to entitlement. <laughs> not all of them. Used to entitlements. <laughs> yeah, that's not always true. But uh, that, you're getting a little personal, Fred. I think most soccer moms are gold diggers. You talking about a particular, just, a particular just because the soccer moms? You talking knows. about a particular soccer he mom? He is. <laughs> Who? Oh yes. yeah, I am. <laughs> beef. Uh. Yeah, we got some beef over here. That's all right. We I don't think have he's to go talking into it. about his former stepmom. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about our stepmom, our we former go, stepmom. We don't have to go into it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a little too personal. You know, if you want to get, if you if you want to get, uh, if you want to lump all people together, I would say that stepmoms are all evil because uh, uh, I had one. <laughs> it was uh, horrible. Yeah, I, I guess. Good call, calling us out on that. I'm sure there there can be soccer moms yes. out there that are good, and there, I, are, step, step there might be libertarian soccer step moms. Step dads are good. I probably I'm a, shouldn't collectivize. I'm a step dad because so. you're a step dad. Yeah, so yeah. they're good. I think uh, me and Nima having the amount of step dads we've had. Uh, you I know your mom. The, you know your mom's listening, right? Well, no, that's not meant in a bad way. <laughs> you know, he's 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 not, he's not he's not hating on mom. No, I'm not hating on mom. I'm hating on. Some some older some older white stepdads, stepdads yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I think that back in the day, I think that's kind of what gave me and Nima our anti-authoritarianism. Yep, yep. You know, mm-hmm. we've good. talked about that a little yeah. bit before. Well, good. Mom did well then. Oh yeah, <laughs> she <laughs> right. raised some good it was, anarchists. It was all it was all part of her master plan. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, we love her. Let's just leave. No, her I, I I can't complain about. By the way, yeah, shout out to Mama. I love you, Mom. We love she's you. She's gonna call in. She's gonna call in and scold you guys and me. She is. I have to go home. You know, she's gonna tan our hides. I'm actually seeing her tomorrow. So. You live there, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frank lives Well, give there. out the number. I'm sure she has it in her auto dial, but uh, or her phone book. Her, her auto do. dial. Her auto dial. <laughs> All right, Mama. Moms or soccer moms or Mexicans, you can call us at 307 215 5171. I'm talking like Mr. Burns. I'm not that old. I think I'm older than your mother, though. I think we've Ice established cream, that. Ice cream, pretzel think, bread, and your auto dialers. I think I'm a couple years older than your mother. And I'm hanging How out with you? you guys. I'm 48. Yeah, but see, you're still young at heart. <laughs> are you saying mom's So's your not? mom. No, mom's so's young mom. at heart, too. <laughs> Come on. Y'all are just... Damn. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Y'all are hounding me. Yeah. It's, it makes good radio. It's it really a does. gang up. It really does. <laughs> gang up. You and you guys both pronounce your G's as hard G's. You say the phone telephone ringer instead of ringer, which is not it's improper. It's just a thing you both do. What's that from? It's Who taught you that? We're from the South. Is that a South I think thing? It's a, I think so. I don't know. Swanging. Swanging and banging. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Uh-oh. It's mama. It's mama. Fiend phone. I don't hey, play the food. Hey, mama. Mom. What's up, mama? This is Mo's Bodine. <laughs> oh, God. It's Mom. All right, I'm going to say. Now, my name is Mo's Bodine. Okay. What do you want to talk about today, Mo Bodine? Um. Oh, well, we're going into a I'm break, actually. Confident. We're going into I want to win the contest. Okay, we're going into a break. Um, Yeah. Why don't you hang on the line here for a second? And we'll talk. Okay. Fiends, 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 okay. fiends, 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 fiends. Don't worm me, bro. Don't worm me, bro. <laughs> Don't hurt me, mom. <laughs> Don't spank me, mama. Don't spank me, mama. Mama said, "Knock you out." <laughs> All right. I'm not saying the freedom. Fiends. Welcome to Freedom Fiends Live. Today, the topic is anarchists and the mothers who love them despite what they do. And in this corner, we have Frank and Nima Vidati. And in the other corner, we have their mother, Lisa, who's calling in to uh, reprimand them, I believe. Uh, (laughs) How you doing, Lisa? I'm doing great. Cool. I'm very proud of my boys. Okay. Hmm. And I I like to think that I raised them to, to think for themselves, you know, rather than take on what I believe in life. They have. Um, I, and I think that's where this whole movement you know, needs to go. My dad said, no. this, said the same thing, but then when I disagree with him, he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there, well, within the whole live care idea, and I know it would all work out in the end, but I'm the type that think, thinks in ways solution-wise. What's the first step? What's the next step to where people wouldn't struggle too much? Riot, I, riot and die. Yeah. Yeah. It, that That's the part that I can't cr- quite wrap my head around. Um, what have you learned from your sons about all of this? A lot. And, it, and it's made me think differently. Um because I am more of the liberal mind, which I know you don't don't like at all. But hey, I we like we like coca drills and we like coca drill, shooting coca drill and and banging tranny <laughs> hookers as much as the next liberal. <laughs> are well, you see, saying my heart goes? Are you my saying my heart that, always goes out to children who who aren't born in good circumstances? Right, I guess, you know, and you wonder and you wonder and, how they'd be taken care of without a state, right? Yeah, those are the ones I worry about. Not so much adults, but but, the but kids. mom, part of your job is taking care of of kids like that. And usually, when they're wronged, some of the people that wrong them the most is their public school teachers and their public school system. Exactly. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So, so don't don't you see how the state is itself the villain when it comes to a lot of kids? It's, it creates the problems oh, in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And then tries I've to look like for, the, tries to look like the hero while by while half ass solving them. Well, for mm-hmm. example, you know we talk about the public school. It isn't working. It, it's a total failure. Um, there's so much 
more out there. I and remember you're, you're speaking from experience. You're a public school teacher, right? You are right. or were? Are you still? Years. You still? No, I was for seventeen years. If you still were, would you feel um, any trepidation about speaking freely about these things on the internet? Like, do you think your job would be at risk? Um, I pretty much had to resign because of my thoughts on how <laughs> things were going. <laughs> awesome. And that's why I resigned, because that, they put the pressure on me to well, that's, resign. That's why Nima resigned from doing mainstream media for the same reason. Yep. Exactly. exactly. Whereas, I, I didn't ever have to resign, because I was already making films and writing books and doing podcasts, and I just changed the subject of what they were about. Right. Yeah. Yep, Michael was and, already and, a do-it-yourself kind of guy. We, I was working for the corporate state, and <laughs> and mom did teach me to stick to my convictions, no matter what those convictions are, and not just go along to get along. That is one of the things right. mom did teach. Because right is boys, right, wrong is wrong, and you, exactly everyone knows that deep down inside. They just they're just not in touch with that truth yet, um, and how to get them there. Um, I don't know. I see people as being on this journey and. They have to go on that journey kind of on their own, but you can kind of lead them. But you have to do it in a way that doesn't uh, Push them. insult them because then I think they shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what do you yeah. like? What do you like? Uh, what do you like most about how your boys turned out? Uh, that they, they can think for themselves, they think logically. And when they put their arguments out there, it makes sense. Um, People listen, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think they're on the verge of some of the next evolution of society. Um, what is there anything? Like with any new ideas, you know, it's hard for people to accept. But I, I think... <laughs> new I new think ideas are always, always scary to people. Is there anything you don't like about them? About how they turned out. <laughs> about I how knew they you were going to ask that. There's got to be plenty. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I like everything about them. Excellent. Of course, I'm kind of biased, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they treat people well. Do you have a favorite? Do, do you have a favorite? <laughs> do she, have she a fa I'm no, horrible, no man. Favorite. I'm horrible. Okay. The youngest. She, she doesn't Each like how I don't call her every unique, Sunday. Uh, personality. For well, example, Frank likes to uh, aggravate me. Yeah, <laughs> he, he does it in a funny way. And Nima doesn't call you enough, but you just call him on the podcast, right? There Nima, yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about Nima. He doesn't call me enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael feels the same way, so I feel the same way. It's not just you, Mom. <laughs> I know because our there... parents aren't here forever. Ooh, you got the guilt trip there, Nima. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Wow. Guilt in us. Right. We're yeah. not here forever yeah. either, Mama. Mom, mom Do just what? learned that we have Jewish heritage from Sicily, so she's trying to put that to good use. <laughs> that's, I guess that's where that comes well, from. Well, you know, my mother, my mother passed away about fifteen years ago, but um, she used to tell me when I was a kid that every full moon she'd come out, she'd come come back and haunt me after she died and make sure I'm being good. <laughs> what? Yeah, which I think <laughs> that's just, crazy. It's that's just her crazy. creepy, psych, creepy psychological way of you know trying to horizontally enforce me into being what she thought was good. But uh, you know, if if there is a way for people from beyond the grave to see what they're doing. And, um, you know, I, I've had people say, oh, I'm sure she'd be very proud of you. I don't think so, man. She was a statist. I'll say it straight up. I loved her. But, um, yeah, she was a Republican. And, uh, uh, you know, did she taught me she taught me not to challenge authority and and said, even if you know you're right, don't do it because it's uh, it'll get you in trouble. Uh, well, hey, and you, you still turned that. out I think, good. I think she would. I, I would think she her. would listen to your show. And I think that would cause her to think a little differently. I mean, listening to the show has made me think differently. Well, you know, if uh, if the if a lot of people's idea of heaven is true, once you pass into it, you have ultimate knowledge of everything. So she wouldn't right. have to listen to my show to know I'm right. She'd go, right. damn, I was right. He was right. <laughs> he was right not to eat his vegetables. I there shouldn't have go. pushed him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm finally eating a lot of vegetables. She could be happy with that. I'm on this paleo diet. I eat a lot of vegetables. That is so good. I'm making um I'm making designer waters right now. Ooh. Ooh. I, I made a cucumber, Ooh. mint, designer and water. lemon water. Oh, that's for drinking or wearing or what do you do with them? To, to drink instead wow. of soda. 
Because oh. that's my weakness. You want to give out? You want to give some freedom recipes out here on the air? Yeah, you take two liters of water, one uh, cucumber to slice, wash it, slice it up, put it in the in the water, slice up one lemon, and you want to use um, around twelve mint leaves. Put the mint in there, and it's just really refreshing. No sugar. You just how long do you let it sit? Huh? How long does it have uh, to sit? Between. Uh, four to six hours in the sun, or just in the kitchen? No, in the fridge. Okay, sounds it sounds great. Yeah, so you it need a refrigerator delicious. too. We'll make some of that. Do you that's, little- that's an important thing for for paleo folks like you, Michael. Is is uh, one Drinks. of the criticisms paleo people have about the modern diet is all the beverages people consume all day long, every day, sodas and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so well, I'm on a modified. It's good to have a few paleo. options. I'm drinking a Diet Coke right now. So do, you, do you still drink paleo. your sodas? Yeah, but I'm weaning off them, so I'll need something to wean on to. <laughs> Yeah, try making yeah, some yeah. different um, recipes with water. Cool. Yeah. Water you add fluoride um, or I, you just I love leave the fluoride that's in there? <laughs> you love what? The fluoride? Do you add fluoride or do you have, do you have to add fluoride or do you just use what's in no, there? No, no fluoride. <laughs> no fluoride. Do you have, are you fluoridated water where you're at? Do you filter it out? I hope not. I probably do. But yeah. I, I buy bottled water. I don't drink drink it from the faucet. Mm. So I'm hoping my bottled water doesn't have Some it. Some of it does. Some of it's tap water. All right, we're going into a break yeah. here. And, okay. Uh, it's good having you on here, Mom. It was Thanks great so much for calling, Mom. Yeah. I love you. Work. Bye, Mama. Love you. Call back anytime. All right. Love you guys. Thanks, Mama. Bye. Love okay. you, too. Love you. Bye. Church. That was a lot of love. I like that. Oh, Worms. yeah. Yeah. Love worm, worm, free love. worm free love. Worm free love, man. <laughs> we'll be back for our final bit here after we. St- <sighs> Did you give out that number, Nima. No, man, it's a last segment. We usually don't give it out at the end. All right, Chitch. So I got a couple quick things I'd, here. I got some. Yeah, some I think news Michael had some use. news we could use. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when I'm falling asleep, I fall asleep, turn off my computer, wake up, and I have no idea how long I've slept. I found out there's a way to tell when I turn my computer off in Windows. You go into Event Manager, and. Uh, uh-huh. Event viewer. Is it like a time on it? Yeah, event viewer, and then go to ah. window window logs application, and uh, you check it out, and you can find out when you went to sleep. It's good to know. Hmm. Can the all- use that against you, though? <laughs> Maybe. Anything <laughs> the on The fact Windows. that your Windows computer records all its events. <laughs> it does. You tell it not to. But, uh, so when we talk about the Freedom Fiends buttons, I sent you some. Did you give some to Frank? No, I've got him stashed somewhere in, yeah. in the beach house. I I'm need gonna, to search for them so I can give him buttons. Yeah. I'm going to hand them out. I sent him yeah. to uh, Nima. He's like, well, thanks for sending me so many, but I don't know what to do with them. I don't know anybody. <laughs> I don't know anybody. And I said, collect all four. Trade them with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give some to Frank. Frank, can you hand them out to some of the pretty ladies? Oh, yeah, I will. Girl, in my experience, girls wear buttons more than guys. Is that right? They wear them on their like, purse and their Except little backpack. Punk rock, yeah, but punk rock guys girls. wear them. Guys can wear it on their backpack straps, though, as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that picture of Nima climbing a mountain looking really athletic, I'm going to use that for the pod image mm. today. And uh, <laughs> I said on Facebook that at the exact moment that photo was taken, I was slumped in a chair with the shades drawn trying to get Nima on the phone while chain smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I like how you said uh, on the Wednesday podcast that Nima always like a you said Arab Prince, right? <laughs> in all those pictures. Yeah. 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 Although we shouldn't say that word too loudly in front of my family here. They'll get offended. Yeah. Arab. We are Persian. <laughs> are Persian. Not Arab. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 But yeah. Any other. Did, is that the only news you can use? Is Vent Data nah. or do you have any other? Well, there's Boardwalk we were talking Empire. About here before. Everybody. Sh- and what? What? Oh, okay. Yeah, t- talk about boardwalk. I was, I was saying we were talking about gear during the break. I don't know if we want to nah. anybody know that stuff. It was just basic. No, nah, I also want to say that I, I, I don't believe in reincar- reincarnation, but I kind of hope there is because I want to live in Lib Paris since I'm spending my life laying the cornerstones for it. <laughs> you want to reap some of the rewards? Yeah, I do. I was yeah. telling my wife we'll probably live long enough to see the singularity, and we'll just download ourselves into computers so we can see the Lib Pair from from our <clears throat> webcam. Well, you better learn all the stuff I'm trying to teach everyone how to learn about computer encryption or else the state will own your soul then. Your soul <laughs> will live soul. in the... Because they'll the own U- my computer. You'll be in the Utah data center. The, the, you, you will be <laughs> yeah. in a jar, in a drawer in the uh, central scrutinizer's belly. The feds will just go put an axe to the rack mount server that my brain's downloaded into. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Screw them. Screw them. State sucks, FTG. Man. So FTG Boardwalk Empire, man. Us. Boardwalk Empire. It's great. Why is it great? You were telling me. But tell our <clears throat> listeners. Well, I just want to say, if you haven't watched it, get it all somehow and watch it, because we're going to be talking about it a lot as soon as Nemo has some time to watch the episodes he has. Uh, it's an HBO show, stars Steve Buscemi. It's uh, <clears throat> created by a, a writer from The Sopranos and um, Martin Scorsese and Mark Wal- Wahlberg. And it takes place during Prohibition. It's kind of like The Sopranos during Prohibition. Uh, you know, and, and except like instead of buying politicians, the, the gangsters are politicians. And it reinforces a lot of what you think is wrong with the state. I think whoever writes it or one of the writers may be a libertarian. Yeah. It's also yeah, you were telling re- me um, it's one really of the ladies good. was like, don't you think all this violence comes from your laws kind of a thing? Yeah. And she was one of the prohibitionists too, you know. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. She was somebody who was like with an alcoholic wife beating husband and became a uh, – she became a, a prohibitionist because of it. But then she ends up marrying him. Instead of leaving him, she wanted the state to come in and take care of her personal yeah. problems for her. Right. And then and then uh, the bootlegger, who's also a politician, has her husband murdered to protect her. And then she ends up marrying him, pretty much. Mm. Hmm. But there's actually a conversation there between, like, a fed goon who's so horrible, he makes, like, Hank Schrader and, and Dan Banning look like nice guys. Um <laughs> There's a fed goon in there like that, anti pro you know, prohibition enforcer from the IRS who uh at one point is like really disgusted with it, like this war on alcohol isn't going well and he's talking to one of his underlings about like the difference between mala in say and mala prohibita laws, which is, you know, I mean, you learn that in law school first day, but it's also like commonly used in libertarian arguments. Yeah, yeah, and that's of course um laws that are actual wrongs against victims versus things that are prohibited by the state or a specific jurisdiction. Nanny laws. Nanny laws. Nanny laws. Yeah. 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 Or victimless crimes versus victim crimes. I think we need a better name for nanny laws that's still funny and disparaging like that, but not nanny. Nanny sounds so like, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, really? Yeah. I was thinking you didn't want to offend the nannies out there. <laughs> well, like the, the actual people who watch kids. Well, DJ's I mean. daughter is a nanny, and she actually okay. took us to task for that. Like, don't call those Did nanny she? laws. Yeah. <laughs> nannies are good. Everyone always thinks what they're doing is good, but she's good, and she's a good nanny. But uh, the state shouldn't be the nanny for adults. Yeah, yeah. The state shouldn't be. I could just end the sentence there. but The state shouldn't be. Yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> Huh. So uh, another term for nanny laws. I don't know. You got any ideas, Frank? Not off the top of my head, no. Not off the well, top I, of your head? I think not, we need to the have a contest. <laughs> we have a, we'll have a contest for that. We need a new word for nanny laws that's like equally insulting and funny and chuckle inducing, but a little more friggin' serious. What, uh, what about what about stepdaddy laws? Ste- mm. Evil stepdaddy laws. <laughs> <laughs> evil stepdad laws. I don't know. Or, or, um, or just step parent laws. So that's one contest. The other contest, let's reiterate Frank's contest. And the, the prize is you get on the golden floppy disk redemption. At least. What's yeah. the contest, Frank? Okay. People send so, in pictures doing what? You'll send in pictures of yourself posting a sign that you made or had a friend make. And uh, you'll send that in, and whoever has the most creative sign in the most creative area will. Well, you didn't say what this. Uh, no, it's a sign. It's a oh, sign yeah. against voting. Yeah. Or about uh, the stupidity of voting, and you yeah. post it next to some actual, like on the side of the road. Political sign. Vote for this yeah. guy. Vote for that tyrant. You you post it next to them, and then you post a picture of you. Uh, maybe yeah, not necessarily a picture of the person with the sign, because that could be. Proof of a crime. I mean, that could incriminating. be like, yeah. incriminating in some places. So whether or not you want to be in it, that's your choice. But okay. send it to talk yeah. back, talk back at freedomfiends.com. And we do not encourage you to break any laws here at the Freedom Fiends because all laws are good and they're for the protection of society. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just get out there and use your freedom of speech. There you go. That's yeah. all. That's all we're I saying. Know. I know. It's like, Nothing what, further. what, you know, uh, okay, constitutionalists out there, the few that are left, um, mm-hmm. what, what part of like, the Constitution hasn't been trampled, do you not get, when we have to put a disclaimer about practicing the First Amendment? Like, really? okay, don't do, don't break any laws in this. 
Yeah, yeah. When we're talking about putting up signs that mm-hmm. give out an idea on public yeah. property, yeah, ne- next to other signs that yeah. try to get people to that vote. that are not like sanctioned. I mean, they don't pay for those. You know, those politicians don't pay to put them up there. I mean, they do if it's on private property and it's a billboard. But the the little roadside yeah. paper ones on the two sticks, they put them everywhere. Yeah. You know yeah, what I, I think they have like volunteers, people who volunteer for their campaign, go out in canvas areas and, and throw those signs down. Yeah. And you know what I learned about it. Casper recently? There's a law what? here against having more than three cats or dogs. So if you have a <laughs> dog or a cat and it has it has puppies or kittens, you're breaking the law, most likely. Wow. Yeah. If they have more than if they have two, that. if they have more than two kittens or, or <laughs> that, that reminds me of like one of those. You know, every now and then people will do those those news pieces about oh all the silly law or that are still on the books. Yeah. You know these laws from a hundred years ago. That should be ago. on one. That's what it sounds like. I know, but it's it's real and it's recent. Don't you have to? Do you have to license your pets in Casper? Uh, I'm not gonna say whether you not you do because. Uh, I don't because yeah. you don't. Want yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know Casper had gone that far. I know. I remember when we were in Washington State in Pasco, they required you to get like a dog license to have a dog. Yeah, and you I have thought, to chip How em. ridiculous is that? <clears throat> they have to be chipped. Um, they don't have to be fixed, but it's five dollars to license them if they're fixed, and thirty-five dollars to license them if they're not fixed. So they use that in financial punishment to do things they think you should do too. Hmm. To, you know, I try see. to enforce what they think is ethical behavior. Right, right. Try to create an incentive for uh, canine genital manipula- uh, mutilation. <laughs> yeah, and you know, <laughs> I, I always get things. I always get pets fixed. Why do I need a law yeah, to tell me yeah. that? I do too, but sometimes I feel kind of dirty <laughs> about it. Yeah. Oh, they're still happy without their nuts. I guess I wouldn't be happy without is my your dog. Nuts. Well, I don't know. I guess I've never not had nuts, so. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a happier life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want an uncircumcised wolf living in my front yard. Oh. Keep the state <laughs> Uncircumcised. I mean, unfixed. Unfixed. Why does it matter if he's circumcised? Unfixed. I don't, people, I don't think people circumcise their pets. <laughs> I said the wrong <laughs> thing, and you know. Okay. Good luck, I was like, good luck circumcising your wolf, people. All right, we're yeah. at the end here. <laughs> the Just the freedom wolf. fiends and. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're talking about dog penis. I was going to say, don't <laughs> listen to anything else. Go listen to our stream. But Ian would yell at me, and I would just be kidding yeah. anyway. So, Worms. Yeah, yeah. All right. Peace. Worms. Worms.